Coming up today on the Dr. Linda Mental Show. You should not suppress the pain and act like it doesn't matter. When you do that, it comes out in a really negative way like anger, maybe alcohol. On the other hand, you don't want to overly blame the person who rejected you and feel entitled about it. If you play the victim, then that is going to get you into that stuck place. The Dr. Linda Mental Show is next. everyone and welcome to the Dr. Linda Mintel show. I'm your host, Dr. Linda Mintel, and I am the relationship doctor and I'm here with my co-host Chris Weigel. And every weekend we're here, we're doing life together, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Happy weekend once again, Yay. Dr. Linda. And you know, we never get tired of saying happy weekend. We love the weekend. That's right. It's because we're not at our real jobs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a topic this weekend that most anyone can relate to because we have all experienced this in our lives. That's right. We're talking about rejection and rejection is definitely something we don't like to experience. Right, Chris? We don't like to feel it, but like you said, it's part of our life. But you know, this is the thing we're going to talk about today. You can use rejection to grow. Or you can get really stuck in it. Okay, I'm going to guess that we want to go with option A, grow with it, That's and right. don't get stuck. That's right. You know, when I think of rejection, I think of a child not getting picked for the team or maybe a script being turned down or not getting a job promotion. I can make a long list because it happens all the time. I know, especially you have young kids and you really feel for them, don't you, when you see them get rejected from something. Right, yeah. It's really hard, but it's common, like you said, and it's not an easy pill to swallow, no matter what life stage you're in. When you hear the words, something like, it's over, I don't want to see you again, I mean, that really stings, whether you know that's from a relationship or a job or a college admission or maybe it's related to a spot on a sports team. Rejection seems to test our feelings of self-worth. And if we don't manage that rejection well, it can really lead to problems like maybe depression and anxiety. That's because rejection is really all about an exclusion of some kind. You know, you're right. That exclusion can be social. It can be relational. It can be from your friends or your peers. It can be from family, friends, romantic relationships. A group of individuals can be rejected, or maybe just you personally can be rejected. And while rejection is a subjective experience, it really does hurt because we are wired to be in those relationships. Our basic needs are that we have to be accepted, we want to belong, and those are tested when rejection is part of any relationship. And I understand that rejection actually activates the brain in a specific way. Yeah, when you experience rejection, the brain science confirms that rejection activates the same parts of our brain as pain. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. So it literally does hurt. So we experience rejection the same way we would, uh, you know, a, a headache or a broken bone. Right. It, it, it hurts. Right. You know, so many well-known people have experienced rejection and experienced that same pain. We think it would be maybe someone who's not necessarily successful, but not the case. Right. So did you know that Oprah was demoted from her news anchor position in her early days because this was the quote, she was not fit for TV. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's crazy. And then Steve Jobs was dumped from Apple before he came back and led the company. Makes you wonder who's sitting up in the top office there. <laughs> Probably not anymore. <laughs> right? That's true. <laughs> no, not Oprah. She's right. not fit for TV. Goodbye. <laughs> he probably lost his job really fast mm. after that. Well, even Walt Disney was told that he, here we go, lacked imagination. <laughs> now, can you imagine? No. I mean, okay, now, we can have this discussion for maybe a later time, but right now you're mad at Starbucks. <laughs> I am. I'm having woke issues with them. Because they're so woke right now, right? <laughs> but Howard Schultz was turned down by the banks 242 times. 240? He kept going back? I guess so. And two, to different banks, I would assume, right? It sounds like it, yeah. And then J.K. Rowling's received rejections from publishers for years before, are you ready? Harry Potter was accepted. Don't you wonder 
which of those publishers that said no to her are sitting there going, oh, man. I think that's oh, what man. we call kicking ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Oprah and all the rest obviously rebounded nicely. They remind me of the Kelly Clarkson song, What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger. Remember mm-hmm. that song? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So rejection is inevitable. I mean, that's the issue. It's inevitable. We're all going to experience it. The problem with rejection is often that we really remember the pain that is associated with that. And we don't think, oh, this is going to help me get stronger and grow. (laughs) Although I bet Oprah thought that at some point. Mm. You know, I bet they just said, okay, I'll show them. And we don't say, wow, I dodged a bullet dating him. (laughs) You know, I wish people would say that when they get rejected from a relationship that then looks like it could have really gone bad. Mm -hmm. We just hurt and we just feel bad. And since rejection is going to happen, uh, what should you do when you experience it? Well, let me say first, Chris, that what you should not do is you should not suppress the pain and act like it doesn't matter. I mean, when you do that, it comes out in a really negative way like anger or some people are actually medicate themselves with food or maybe alcohol or some other you know thing like gambling or something. On the other hand, you don't want to overly blame the person who rejected you and feel entitled about it. If you play the victim, then that is going to get you into that stuck place. So we acknowledge the rejection and that it hurts. There's no denying that it hurts, but then what? Well, then tell yourself, you know, it's just a delay or it's a temporary block to get you to your goal. I mean, I've had to do this with med students who don't exactly get what they want. And, I, and I'll say, you know what, this is just a turn in the road or this mm. is just a temporary block. But you can still get there. You can get where you're going, especially when you believe that God has a calling on your life. In the Christian faith, we don't look at this as something that, you know, that's it, I'm done. God can use anything. So in other words, rejection is either a bump in the road or a clear response. You know what? Maybe you have to go another way. But it doesn't feel good even when you try to tell yourself, hey, it's okay. I know our wise producer, who is also a media executive, once told me something, Chris, that really helped with rejection. He said, you have to be careful not to take it too personally because it's like a casting call for a film or a TV show or commercial. This is helpful. Mm -hmm. I really thought about this a lot in recent times. The producer is looking for something very special in a casting call for a film, let's say, and they want something very specific, and you may not be that specific thing. So Mm -hmm. say, for instance, the part calls for someone 5'2 with black hair, and you are 5'8 with blonde hair. I'm actually six foot with blonde hair. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And it's not, you probably won't get that part, uh, and they're probably going to reject you. But it's not personal. It's just not what they wanted for the acting Mm. part. And I think we can apply that to relationships as well. When you're dating someone or you're, you're going for the job and it doesn't work out, maybe it would be helpful to think about it like a casting call. It does help you to think that, hey, it's not me. It's just they were looking for something else. That yeah, I don't have. And isn't that really the case with a relationship mm-hmm. or a job promotion or something that you're you're right. going for? So basically, it, it really comes down to just don't take it personally. And I know that's really hard, but aspiring actors have to do this all the time. Otherwise, mm. you know, their inner critic would take them to a huge place of self-doubt or inadequacy in other negative places, which I think does happen to a lot of mm-hmm. people that are in jobs that are getting rejected all the time. That advice really is helpful. And maybe thinking of rejection more like a casting call helps you let it go instead of how rejected you feel. Yeah, with rejection, you really have to develop the grace to let it go. I do believe that having faith makes that easier in that you can trust that God is ordering your steps, and this must not have been one of them. And that doesn't mean, though, that you give up trying. No, that's right. If you believe in something and you think you're supposed to do it, then keep showing up, keep trying, keep going. You just haven't found the right thing or the right person yet. You know, something that makes the keep going idea difficult is that we are conditioned to expect positive outcomes when we try things. And we don't like to lose here in America, especially don't like to be told no. We want to be told yes all the time. Well, I think that over anticipation that you're describing can really actually make the pain greater. So it brings this sort of false confidence that we might have. So instead, just be humble. Be open and trust the Lord as he opens or closes doors. That's right. And uh, speaking of the issue of trust, you need to trust me on this, Dr. Linda. We have to take a break. (laughs) But stay with us as we talk more about growing from rejection here on the Dr. Linda Mental Show. 
What do Thomas Jefferson, Agatha Christie, Pope John Paul II, and Princess Diana have in common? Well, these notable individuals and many others, past and present, share the habit of journaling. Hi, I'm Dr. Linda, the Relationship Doctor, and I've got some tips for you on the value of journaling. Whether you're just writing down a few thoughts or pouring out your heart on paper, journaling has some real benefits, like getting a handle on your emotions or a better understanding of other people or even organizing your priorities. Sometimes reading your older journal notes will help you appreciate the sweet little details of life you enjoyed but maybe have forgotten. One of the best benefits of journaling comes when you look back and you see how the Lord has been there in all your circumstances, directing your steps and taking care of the things that matter to you. If you've not considered journaling before, give it a try and see which of those benefits journaling might bring your way. Welcome back to the Dr. Linda Mental Show. And just a reminder that you can follow Dr. Linda on social media, Twitter at Dr. Linda Mental, and on Facebook, Dr. Linda Mental author and speaker, and Instagram at Dr. Linda Mental. Social media is a great way to keep up with Dr. Linda's speaking and her writing on relationships. And the book that might help with today's topic is Breaking Free from Anger and Unforgiveness. We don't want you to get stuck in anger when rejected, but moving forward. And don't forget, you can listen to this podcast anytime on most any podcast platform and on MyFaithRadio.com. Well, you did that without clearing your throat. If we had cameras in here, they would see that we're constantly, <laughs> we're having all kinds of issues with our throat. You're drinking coffee, which doesn't help with yeah, that, you no, know. It's, it's, I'm trying to drink water and get my throat clear. That's going to make it worse with all that coffee. <laughs> but we know if you've been a regular listener, Chris likes his coffee. I will live to be 150 because of that coffee right there. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, back to the topic on growing from rejection. It is important that we learn to handle rejection well because of how it can affect us. When you handle it poorly, it really can bring on loneliness. I'm thinking especially, Chris, of relationships. Mm -hmm. When you get rejected from a relationship, sometimes you just want to curl up and not talk to anybody, you know, and check out from the world. But That's not a a good way to deal with it. And you can also then start feeling bad about yourself. And so low self-esteem can come along. Some people, when they get rejected, get real aggressive. Hmm. You know, you've seen that in uh, movies. Well, I'll show him or I'll show her. (laughs) And depression can be one of the fallouts, too. So those feelings of insecurity are heightened. And when you're rejected, a person can get even more sensitive to future rejection. So it kind of plays on itself and builds on Mm. itself if you don't learn how to handle it. And then you can get really anxious on top of all of the things we've just talked about. You can get deeply sad about the rejection. So you don't want any of those things to take hold. And uh, one thing you feel that is important is to engage in self-examination, not self-criticism. Uh, Say more about that when there is rejection, like you said, in relationships. Well, there's a difference between the two. I mean, self-criticism leads to statements like, you know, I must be a real jerk. Nobody's going to ever love me or what's wrong with me. And then if you're thinking about it like that, it's going to take you nowhere but feeling really, really down. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of a downward spiral that doesn't take you anywhere. So instead, what's better is to just do a little self-examination rather than focusing on the other person Think about how you behaved in the relationship. What do you need to change that would make the next relationship better? Mm -hmm. And don't ruminate on the mistakes. Just learn from them with the idea that all relationships teach us something. Also ask yourself, you know, are there unique circumstances that led to this rejection? And then when you do self-examine, don't over-personalize. And I think this is where you could get into that routine of kicking yourself over and over again. Don't do that. And maybe think about the fact that maybe the rejection was more about the other person than mm-hmm. you. Now, again, I don't, you know, I don't want you getting into blame. Like, well, that person was a jerk. But, you know, you can really look at a situation sometimes and say, well, maybe that person wasn't right for me, or there was something about that that wasn't going to work in the long run. Of course, it could be more about you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that can be the case. But then think it through. Do that self-examination rather than just feeling bad. So in this assessment, should you try to be specific about what led to the rejection? Yes, because then if you can figure it out, you can say, okay, what was it I was doing that really made this relationship difficult? You can avoid some problems in the future. Like, why did this happen? Were there lessons along the way that I could improve on? You know, I could learn from. I could improve the way I behave. And that will help you grow doing all of that. 
I do know that sometimes it's hard to accept rejection because we tend to idealize the relationship. For example, after a breakup, speak to that. Yeah, so when a breakup occurs, there's really this tendency to idealize the relationship in terms of what it was or it might have been. I mean, you know how you can just sit there and think, he was so wonderful, Mm -hmm. and I'll never find anybody like that again. That's idealizing it. But we actually forget the heartaches when we're doing that and the differences that might have made that relationship difficult in the first place. To keep from idealizing, it helps to write a list of the things that made the relationship not work or caused a lot of tension. And then you can look at your list maybe every day if you need it to remind yourself, yep, mm -hmm, there were problems. In other words, look at your list, learn from those notes, move on, and stop looking back. It wasn't ideal or it would have worked. Mm. When you experience rejection... Here's the big question. How does social media help? It doesn't help at all. Do you think? (laughs) I mean, it's such a mess with social media. And social media can deepen the wound after a breakup. I mean, you see your ex enjoying life, moving on, taking a great vacation, all these things. And so many people say it just makes you feel even worse. Mm -hmm. So you might want to just get off social media and take a break. That really is something I've recommended to a lot of people that have had a lot of heartache with a relationship. You don't need to expose yourself to those posts that are going to further hurt you, that are going to wear away at your self-esteem. Instead, maybe just vent or talk to a friend, seek out the people who you know will support you, and surround yourself with people that will actually encourage you through this time and love you for who you are. You have to take some time to heal when there's rejection from a relationship. So get off social media and surround yourself with some actual real supportive people. Yeah, and one of the reasons you do this is because you have to develop what we call a strong internal locus of control. Okay, what's that? Locus of control. <laughs> no, I know you're going to think of something crazy. I'm not saying locus, like the locus outside. Oh, so it sounds like a bug of, <laughs> bug of some sort. That's yeah. not what we're talking about. <laughs> so this has to do with this generalized expectancy that you have that is something inside of you that's going to relate to an outcome. So in other words, when rejection happens outside of your control, that's called an external locus of control. You can't do anything about it. It's outside Mm -hmm. of you. For example, your job interfered with your time together. Now that's an external thing. So Mm -hmm. you could work on that. Or his mom didn't like you. Well, that's an external thing that you really don't have any control over. Or he didn't like that you made more money than he did. Again, that's kind of an external force. Okay, but isn't that the case? These things are influenced by external things that we can't always change or control. Yes, but when you ruminate and you constantly think about those external forces, it doesn't really help you much. Mm -hmm. However, then what I'm saying is you can focus on the things within your control, and that's that internal locus of control. Internal things in your life, such as things like, well, I did act really needy in that relationship, or... I was constantly questioning him and jealous. You know, maybe that was too much. Or I I wouldn't talk to him when I was upset. You know, that's in your control. You can change that. That's something you can make different. So when you look at it, the things that you can control that are internal, that will help you handle rejection better because those are things that you can work on. Those are things that you can change. And those are things that will impact your future relationships. In order to deal with rejection, how about telling yourself that you are more than a rejection? Well, I like that idea, actually. Mm -hmm. When you face rejection, it does help to remember that, again, kind of going back to that casting call idea, what is desired by one person may not be desired by another. There's that casting call idea. I know. So that is a that is such a great idea. He's he's thrown up his hands right, in, the, yeah. behind, in the control area and going, yes, uh, it was a good idea. <laughs> um, you know, again, because it didn't work out doesn't mean you're necessarily flawed. It's one person or one person's experience, and it didn't work out for a number of reasons. I know this sounds like, oh, yeah, so why am I having so much trouble with mm-hmm. this? But it's really acknowledging the hurt. So make sure you express your feelings, do some self-examination, learn, and then Try to be at peace with it. No one has the right to define your worth other than God. And he's already declared that you are unconditionally loved and accepted. He doesn't reject you, and he has good for you. Well, good. That is a positive note to keep in our brains as we go to a quick break. More to come on Growing From Rejection. There's no doubt about it. We are definitely living in the text, Twitter, and email age. The handwritten note has become quite the relic. 
But just because we don't write much with pen and paper anymore doesn't mean we should forsake the kind and encouraging message. Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Mintel, the Relationship Doctor, and I want to encourage you to share a kind word. Even if it's a text, the power of telling a friend you're thinking of them, complimenting a success, or just saying, hey, hang in there, can make all the difference. If you've ever had your day interrupted by just a quick but genuine message from someone close, you know how a thought can raise your spirits, rejuvenate your mind, or help you stick on a difficult path because someone just cares. While you're listening right now, someone may come to mind, someone you can encourage with a few words. Take a minute and text, tweet, or email that person. Tell them you value them and the part they play in your life. It just might change their whole day. You're listening to the Dr. Linda Mental Show, and Dr. Linda has written numerous books that you can find on her website or online. The book that relates to today's topic is Breaking Free from Anger and Unforgiveness. You can check out her website, drlindamental.com, and that's where you can find the book Breaking Free from Unforgiveness, and you can connect on social media. And Dr. Linda, uh, back to that book, it fits in your pocket. It's that pocket-sized book, and this Mm. is the book that has helped so many people. I mean, it has sold like wildfire. And it's easy because it really just gives you a lot of prescriptions on what to do with anger and unforgiveness. Well, those are two things that uh, we struggle with. Well, and they relate to rejection, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Also, before we move on, don't forget about the podcast on iTunes. Right. You might need some extra help with this one. You might need to listen to this a couple of times or share this with a friend. Keep the book in your pocket and then listen to the (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Locked and loaded and ready to go. (laughs) Well, before the break, we talked about how important it is to not let one person or one experience define you. And you mentioned how God can help with that. Let's talk about that a bit. You know, it really is a key part in my mind of growing from rejection. You don't allow rejection, as I said, to define you and determine who you are. It was a message, Chris, that I would give to my kids all the time, that no one should have that power. I said that before the break, and I really mean that. No one should have the power to do that. Just give that to God. It is easy to give others the power to define us. Mm -hmm. So why do we struggle with this one so much? I think because rejection hurts so much and the pain is really deep when that happens. We just lose perspective. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible talks about renewing our mind with God's word, because that really does help us. We have to remind ourselves how God thinks of us when others don't have such a high opinion of us. And again, I'm not trying to think that we're conceited or we're really great people, but God does think of us in a very good way. Mm -hmm. And we either believe that God is ordering our lives or he's not. So when you're rejected, again, feel that hurt, but then trust God that he has something better for you. It is interesting how we can get so upset when someone rejects even when they don't know us that well. I know. And think about the social media part of this. I mean, people can say mean things online and you get really worked up about Mm. it. But you should ask yourself, does that person's opinion of you, is it, first of all, is it really accurate? Mm. Do they even know you? Because rejection is all about you not measuring up to someone else's subjective experience of you. And who says that that person is right? Again, it's his or her opinion, and it's only one opinion of many, many people. I think it's important to remind us here that Jesus knows the pain of rejection. I mean, he experienced it so many times when he was on earth, then especially when he was on the cross. Right. He was rejected by his own people, the Jews. They wouldn't accept his claim of deity. He was rejected by family members. He was rejected by his community, Nazareth, where he grew up. Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. People rejected him in his message of salvation, and, you know, that still happens today. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4.15 says that Jesus is not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. In other words, he knows this pain of rejection firsthand, and he shares it. And think about what happened on the cross when Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. You know, he didn't ask, Why am I in such pain? Or why do I have to endure this? He asked, Why have you forsaken? forsaken me. It was the momentary abandonment that felt so awful. And you know, if we go back to the very beginning, sin entered the world because two people rejected God and his command. Then they faced God's eternal rejection. Jesus redeemed all of that through his death and resurrection. Yeah, that's the good news. So to redeem means to buy back, to accept, to choose. And that's the opposite of rejection. We know that now that nothing can separate us from the Father's love. 
And man's rejection is made so small in light of the truth that through the gospel, we have God's eternal love and acceptance and full validation of who we are. That is very healing to hear those words. But some people get really stuck in anger when they are rejected. I mentioned your book, Breaking Free from Anger and Unforgiveness. If you become angry, it's important to deal with your anger in a biblical way. It is, and the Bible's really clear to do that, to not let anger simmer and stay with you, to not give vent to it, and not to try to get back at the person. Don't hurt those who have hurt you. Now, we'll all acknowledge that it's natural to feel like that, right? Most of us want to take revenge when we've Mm -hmm. been hurt, but the God part in you says don't do it. Revenge doesn't take away the hurt, even when you do it. When you engage Mm -hmm. in it, it doesn't do that. It just hurts other people. So take the high road of emulating Christ. And if you do, Chris, you're going to be a better person for it in the long run. You know, if you need more help in this area, we'll say it again. Get that book, Breaking Free from Anger and Unforgiveness. It gives lots of guidance on dealing with anger, and I highly recommend it. Are there times when you need to confront rejection? There are, but we need to do it with love and gentleness, which is where you really have to control those emotions. Sometimes people don't know that they've hurt you, so sometimes it can help to tell them that. Other times, the rejection's very intentional. So if you would feel better confronting the person who rejected you, do it, but practice your confrontation skills in a way that isn't harsh and tells the person the impact that the rejection had on you. And then understand that when you confront rejection, it doesn't mean that the other person is going to be sorry or even apologize to you. So you really do need to decide on that first and pray about what to do before you do it. And if it hurts and didn't seem fair, you still need to forgive and move on. That's right. And despite what we hear nowadays, and it's so concerning the message we're hearing in our culture about, you know, just be angry with someone and get revenge. We know, we know, we know that forgiving people helps your mental health. It helps your relationship. It helps your spiritual relationship. It is essential for healthy living. So forgive the person. Do not carry resentment and hurt, or it's going to turn to bitterness. And you're going to become explosive at some point, or maybe even depressed. So choose to forgive and let go with God's help. And if you still struggle with rejection, then what? I would say take the pain of the rejection to God, cry out to him. You know, he knows what it feels like. We've just talked about that. He knows what rejection is. He was rejected. He was despised, the scripture said, a man of sorrow, according to Isaiah. I encourage you to give your pain and your burdens to him. God is safe. He will not hurt you or reject you. And he wants to heal that part of you that was deeply hurt. Well, that's all the time we have today. Many thanks to our producer, Norm Mental, our engineer, and my co-host, Chris Weigel, who makes the show a conversation. From all of us here at Faith Radio, we'll talk to you again next weekend. In the meantime, remember, we're doing life together, and it's better when you don't have to do it alone. Well, thanks for listening to this conversation from the Dr. Linda Mental Show. These podcasts are available because of listener support. You can make a gift now at MyFaithRadio.com. And thanks for sharing this audio link with a friend and helping us grow the impact of the Dr. Linda Mintel Show. Also, take a moment to subscribe to the podcast today at iTunes or your podcast player, and you'll never miss a show.